Good day, everyone, and welcome to the recording of the third lesson in Diogenes Beliefs. Before we dwell deeper or delve deeper into the beliefs of indigenous people, let us first acknowledge or define what are the indigenous peoples. So, indigenous peoples or IDs refer to communities who are the original inhabitants of a particular area. They are the original inhabitants. And they have a very deep historical and cultural tie to the environment. Uh, they are very tied with the environment. That's the reason why if you want to learn how to communicate, how to interact with nature, they are the teachers. They, they are the best teachers you can ask for. According to the United Nations 2019 report, there are an estimated 350 to 500 million indigenous peoples in 90 countries around the world. And they represent 5,000 different cultures. And just like what I said, this number is very few. There's very few indigenous peoples in the world. Now, what is an indigenous religion? Indigenous religion refers to any pre-colonial, that's the term, to any pre-colonial or primal ancestral belief system of indigenous peoples. It was influenced by colonizers. Such beliefs, as they are practiced at present, may or may not include influences. variation, syncretism, variation of beliefs. Once colonizers influence a particular place, and then it also influence the belief systems of the people in that area. Kaya nga, sometimes uh, you know predominant practice practices of a major religion have you know, some aspects carried over from their ancestral origin or sa an ancestral religion. So religious scholars often categorize indigenous religions into two types. The first type will be the undisturbed, as the term implies, undisturbed. They remain pure, but as uh, when, when you go to your study of UCSP next semester, you will find, you find out that there is no such thing as a pure culture. And the latter be syncretic. By syncretism, meaning the on blended religions. Blended religions. Say, for example, the voodoo in Haiti, Santeria in Cuba, both are a result of interactions within Christianity and the religions of Africans were brought to Haiti and Cuba during the slave trade. Now, there are certain characteristics common among indigenous religions. Number one, they are animists in nature. Animism, they worship nature. They worship the environment. They look at nature as sacred. The world is sacred. The sacredness is tied to the natural world and the landscape. Kaya nga, uh, when you meet among yan, let's say, for example, in Mindoro, you, they will simply tell you not to uh, get all the fruits in a tree or not to disturb unknown paths because they respect nature, because nature is sacred. An example of, of this animists in nature will be a healing prayer by an indigenous healer in Mountain Province in the Cordilleras, no? recorded by Dominic Biauni in 1994, as uh, presented by the book uh, In Cultivation and Theology by Father Leonardo Mercado S.T.D. So I read the uh, Cordilleran Tam. Uh, I'm sorry, I might mispronounce some words. Tikka ay bilig, di ba to ay kinumsoan, di si kang nga buong masay ang ka. Kaanin man bakit bibigin magdalena ay naitay aon at umiig na itin man daw daw atin itinaita. O spirit of the stone, if you are the one that was insulted by what this family did, have mercy and free magdalena from their knee-sickness since they will come and offer what you are requesting from them. They are talking to the spirit of the stone because the stone has a spirit that's animism. They, they, may, they might not literally worship the stone, but they believe that, that in the stone there's a spirit. 
to the salt animals and beans. Tayo mga Pilipino, we have a lot of Tayo mga golden Pilipino, may mga remnants para mga ganitong klaseng, ganitong klaseng mga uh, practices. Let's say, for example, when you pass through uh, a punso or an, a new path no, sa mga mountains or sa forest, we will always utter kabitabi po. Kabitabi po. It's as if we believe, it's as if we know that there's someone there, something there that we cannot see. And to respect these spirits, that's our way of saying, excuse me, we are going to pass through. So that's animism. That's the first common characteristics, characteristic among indigenous religions. Number two, minorities. They have unique traditions and religions. Although they are minorities, they are very few, but they have unique traditions and religions. Nakalungkot na naman because they are minorities. Pag mga parodayan, sabi ko na parodayan sa mga documentaries and just real, they don't have easy access to public service and political power. Maybe that's the reason why they don't get enough. Number one, they are few. But pag konting morante, you don't give them to the elections, so you will not take care of them. Sana hindi yan na nangyayari. Third, they rarely have religious texts. They rarely have religious texts. Wala silang Bible, wala silang Quran. They don't have written form of their tradition in its completeness or in its entirety. What they have are oral traditions, beliefs and practices expressed and transmission, transmitted through rituals, sacred objects, and then oral traditions. In the sense, they do not have formal philosophy or theology. Unlike the religions of the West, unlike Christianity, for example, and, and Islam, they have own distinct philosophy and theology. Indigenous people emphasize rituals over doctrines. And that's the, also the reason why there uh, is some, uh, some type of ritual, but it varies from different places of origin. Kung saan na doon, or saan na ka-enclose yung yung tao na yung, yung specific group of people na ano, it was already influenced by their culture, by their geography. You know, sometimes uh, different rituals, but they are offered for the same purpose. So those are the three common characteristics you know, common to all indigenous peoples or indigenous religions. Now, there is such a thing as the Filipino image of God. There is a Filipino image of God. The Filipino concept of God. Since Filipinos vary, right, my indigenous people not, and they vary, we shall begin with the ancient Filipinos. So we have like, ancient Filipinos and myths. Uh, myths, mga mito. No? Pag tinanong, nung tinanong ko yung iba sa inyo sa classroom, what is a myth? They, you, you simply associate it with superstitious belief, with fictitious belief, with uh, false beliefs, which cannot be regarded as the truth. But let's, let me clarify it at this moment. What is a myth? Myth means a story accepted as true by the people who narrate it. Accept it as true. And remember, the people who narrate it don't know yet what's up. Who don't know yet the discipline of science. They cannot simply say to see is to believe. Since they needed an explanation, a myth can serve as a source of an explanation of a certain phenomena. For example, creation myths. Bakit nga ba may roon kaysa wala? Why is there something rather than nothing? And during their time, wala namang telescope among indigenous peoples, wala namang mga learned scientists during their time. So they will make use of these myths to make sense of their reality. It doesn't mean that it's false doesn't mean that it's, it's, it's a lie, it's a fiction. By the way, myth comes from the Greek word mythos, which means word, message, news, or story that, is, that are designed to be communicated, and not just to be communicated, but also to communicate the truth. A myth, according to Mercado, is not a work of a person. Because it has been received through a vision or a dream. 
and therefore has extraordinary authority and respect. For Carl Jung, myths uncovers people's worldview, which is unified. There's something universal about people's worldview. Furthermore, myths legitimize social behavior. For example, creation myths. Diba? Creation myths usually explain why things are at present, primeval setting. Diba? At present. Why is there something rather than nothing? These creation myths explains why things are at present. For Carl Jung, myths are analogous to dreams. Myths are the projection of the part of psychic reality which is accessible to the collective unconscious. Myths are the experience and expression of what happens in the soul. That is something uh, indigenous religions, indigenous people share in common. They have that longing. They have that experience and expression of what happens in the soul. Because these people do not only believe in, the, in material things. They do not only believe in physical things. They also believe that there is something unseen. Something spiritual. And that's the for you. A myth of voices, the aspirations, the struggles, and also the horror and terror that are inevitably bound up with human existence. It serves as the ultimate explanation of reality for a people. That's why we cannot simply dismiss a myth as superstitions. Of course, not all myths can be true, but they are communicating something. They are communicating a certain truth that answers a certain phenomenon, a certain question, a certain law. Parang sa Genesis ganun din, no? The Genesis creation myth. No? Uh, kaya nga sa mga scholars, Genesis chapter 1, particularly chapter 1 and 2, the creation account, should not be taken literally. But it communicates something. It communicates the truth that uh, that cannot be measured by science, by the standards of science. Kaya pa may mga nag-ipag-argue and they will tell us that the Genesis creation narrative is a false one simply because one cannot create no matter how powerful a God that is in six days. Because in, in, in Genesis, in the Hebrew Bible, the God of the universe created everything in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. That's the literal take of, of, of uh, the mythical operation account. But it communicates theological truth. Number one, that there must be a creator. Number two, that there is creation. Number three, that there should there, there's order in reality of creation. Just like in data. Everything doesn't happen all at once. It's also a process. It's also a progression. This, uh, just like the, the Genesis creation of God, which is divided into six different days with different creation and create different creatures being created in a specific day. So again, we cannot simply dismiss. Let's communicate theological truth that explains our take on reality on a particular phenomenon that even the learned scientists can easily fathom an answer. But the Filipino idea of God, so we have creator God, but the science, they call it Pathala, or sometimes Sidapa, or Malakon, or Babadu, minsan Makapatan, or Makaubus. For the Tagalogs, ang tawag nun na Pathala may kapal, for the Negritos, may lupa, and for the Cordillerans, Kabunian, Kabunian. But they are more concerned, the ancient Filipinos are more concerned with lesser spirits who have direct impact in their practical life. Parang may specializations. Yeah, they believe in the spirit of the mountain. There comes the Diwata of Mount Makiling. There comes the Diwata of Mount Mayon. There comes the Diwata of, of, of other mountains and bodies of water. There, there's this specialization in, in, in the part of the lesser spirits who are guiding or having direct impact and and, uh, and probably relationship with the people but not the creator God. 
Kaya nga, the people did not forget to invoke the Creator God in times of calamity. It's yun lang, no? Kasi sometimes, according to Gertado, uh, kapag ka ordinary festivities, the people, but the ancient Filipinos, will offer to a specific deity or specific a lesser spirit, mga diwata, no? But if there's grave calamity, earthquakes, typhoons, the desert destructive, they invoke the Creator God. They invoke the Creator God. Most probably because those incidents or those uh, calamities are brought about by the destruction of the whole of creation. Pero kung mag- magsasaka ka, gusto mo na magandang kanin, you invoke the lesser God of that area. Or you invoke the ancestors, the spirits of your ancestors taking care of the land. So the Creator God for ancient Filipinos is somewhat remote. Some, someone detached you know, from the people. And this deity seems to be a personal or impersonal. The early Filipinos got involved with the Anitos in the first place. Anitos, diba, no, tribal, nature, ancestor spirit. Parang some sort of intermediaries, mediator. Kaya nga siguro ang daing nasakot ng mga Espanyol, itong mga tatutubo. Kasi mayroong relationship yung mayroong uh, pagkakahawig, pagkakatulad no? between the Anitos, the tribal nature, ancestor spirits, and then the saints in, in the Catholic tradition who serve also as intermediaries. So I'm not sure, okay? Uh, lagi natin ang patroon, ang patroon ng pagsisaka dyan. Sa kanya kayo manalangin, para panalangin niya kayo sa may kapal. Tawag so, bigyan kayo ng magandang an. At yan ang bakita natin, buhay na buhay pa ang kaman kapag mga pistang bayan. Uh, talagang pinasasalamatan ang intermediary saint, ang patron saint that help the people to pray for a good ani, for a good crop no? sa isang buong taon. So what about the God for the Hanunuong Mangyans? The Mangyan name for God is Mahal na Makaako. Mahal na Makaako. Ako meaning improvement, betterment, or a promise. Ako. Ako. The one who takes it upon himself to improve or to make another better or one who has pledged himself to do so. Mahal, on the other hand, but here in English, is translated here according to Mercado as divine. Kaya nga yung mahal na makaako, if it, it will be translated into English, it means divine providence. Divine providence. So it is somewhat impersonal God, but in a personal God. It is somewhat detached from them, even for the Hanunuong Mangyas. How about in the lowland, for the lowland Philippines? For the lowland Filipinos, ganun din. We have the remnant of that a personal or impersonal God, greater God for them. Because they believe on forces such as palad or ga- and gaba. Palad or faith, F-A-T-E, kapalaran. Ba? Ang root word ng kapalaran ay palad. Faith. It is a force that you need to follow and you cannot resist it. Because it's your talhana. No matter where, where, where you go, no matter what you do in the future, no matter what choices you make, kapag kayo na nakatakda sa iyo, una po, kababalik, that's pala, that's faith. And then gaba. Gabain. Gaba means divine retribution. This is the version of karma. Kaya lang yung gaba kasi it's divine retribution. It focuses on the negative aspect. Kasi yung karma ng Hinduism, two-way siya. Positive karma and negative karma. But for Gaba, it's only the negative. Now, the following proverbs reflect the belief of Palad, which is for them like a wheel. Bulong. Diba? Ang buhay ng tao ay bulong ang kahamping. Sa ibabaw mo ngayon, bukas sa ilalim. Another, Ang panahoy ng bilin ng mundo ay baliktarin, ang naipapailalim ay napakaibabaw din. And the Messiahs have a similar proverb. Ang kinabuki sa tao sa masa dagat, may tao may hunas. Life is like a sea. There is a low tide and high tide. The Ilocanos also have the same. They compare faith to day and night. Tibiyag kasda aldaw can be 
no maminsan dadagaan, no daduma na lampi, no maminsan nanawigan, no daduma na sinigit. Life is like day and night. Sometimes warm, sometimes cold, sometimes bright, sometimes dark. Alad is an overpowering force which people have to obey. The same is true for GABA and its positive counterparts to everything. Now, in conclusion, these Filipinos, you know, although God for the tra traditional Filipino has been a personal and impersonal, uh, they still believe in a creator God. That's the reason why it is also easier for Christianity to usher in and introduce another concept of God that is of a personal God. Kaya nga, ngayon, we find a continuum of those who believe in the impersonal creator and the personal creator. So there is this mixture. So there is this mixture. Uh, I think even the proverb na sa'yo sang awal sa tao ang gawa is a sort of a manifestation of the intermingling between the ancient Filipino belief of an, an impersonal or a personal God and the influence of Christian uh, theology or Christian religiosity in the life of the Hathobos or of the ancient Filipinos you know, of a, a very personal and a very relational God. So this is lesson three, the indigenous beliefs, indigenous religions, a prelude. Now before we even talk about different religions of the world, the, the major religions of the world, at least we have a background of what our ancestors, the early inhabitants of this archipelago will be. Thank you for listening. Have a good day. See you.